Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by Dr. Chad Ungarian. Chad completed his undergraduate education at Allegheny College in 2015, where he majored in biochemistry. He subsequently came to the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, where he completed his doctoral work in the group of Professor David Sarla. While there, he worked on the synthesis of complex sesquiterpene tropolones, as well as aminoglycosides. After his PhD, he went on to complete a postdoctoral fellowship at ETH Zurich in the Mirandi Lab. And from there, I'll hand it over to you, Chad. Thanks a lot for coming on to talk about your doctoral work today. Hi, Matt, and thank you for the invitation to share some of the work that I performed during my PhD involving the enantioselective synthesis of robustomycin utilizing a novel DARE made of hydramination of benzene. To begin, I want to provide an overview of derivative of methods, which in the simplest forms have been taught in introductory organic chemistry courses, including the birch reduction, hydrogenation, and oxidative derivation of phenols. However, even more complex and exotic transformations, including transition metal derivatizations, as well as arene alkene metaphotocyclo additions, also exist. While these and others serve as the chemical derivative of methods available, it should be noted that enzymatic dermatizations have also been realized, including dermate of dihydroxylation. These dermate of transformations have been critical components in the planning and synthesis of complex and biologically relevant compounds. For example, birch reduction for the synthesis of morphine, dermate of hydrogenation utilized in the construction of Tamiflu, phenol oxidative dermatization and the assembly of antifungal gesterone, and arene alkene metaphotocyclo addition in the forging of the complex phytodranic acid ring system. From a retrosynthetic standpoint, the precursors of the key steps are highly decorated arenes that require significant synthetic overhead in order to arrive at. Along this line, we imagine an alternative, derivative approach in which an unfunctionalized simple arene might serve as a more economic, readily available, and diversifiable precursor. With this in mind, we began with benzene, the most basic aryan available, and imagined it as a classical cyclohexatriene. In this manner, it is possible to imagine controlled functionalization of each olefin to eventually arrive at a densely functionalized cyclohexane core. Of course, this realization remains challenging for several reasons, including the high energy barrier required to dearomatize benzene. Benzene remains the most difficult as seen by lower energy barriers associated with extended aromatic systems. Second, the functionalization of one pi bond leads thereafter to a much more reactive cyclohexadiene compared to the parent arene, which ultimately does not allow control of the desired functionalization, but instead overreaction and in many cases decomposition. In order to overcome these obstacles, we turn to compounds we now dub arenophiles, as they are capable of undergoing excitation under visible light and in the presence of an appropriate airing system to generate either an exiplex electron transfer or charge transfer complex, which ultimately leads to a form of 4 plus 2 cycloaddition product. In searching for a suitable arenophile, it was important to recognize a narrow homo-lumo gap of the arenophile as well as maintaining the homo of the arene within the range of the homo lumo gap of the arenophile. Performing DFT calculations, the most suitable candidates were revealed with MTAD, short for 4 methyl 124 triazoline 35 dione, being optimal based on the synthetic accessibility. Notably, with this reaction, we could qualitatively monitor it as MTAD is a fluorescent pink molecule. When placed with benzene in a solution of dichloromethane, the pink color persists, which is evidence of the unconsumed arenophile MTAD. However, excitation of the reaction mixture with white lights leads to a colorless solution of the corresponding cycloadduct, which in the case of benzene is not able to be isolated, but formation could be monitored using low temperature NMR techniques. The setup for these reactions is quite user-friendly as we use LED lights that can be purchased from online stores such as Amazon. The electronics can then be housed in test tubes and be submerged into a cryocool bath. In this way, they can be placed in a carousel fashion to surround the reaction vessels and provide sufficient light irradiation while maintaining the reactions at low temperatures. 
We were interested in expanding the scalability of this chemistry, so we decided to design a custom photoreactor that contained multiple ports in which the LEDs could directly be submerged into the reaction media. Additionally, a central opening enabled the attachment of a mechanical stir. Ultimately, this was able to provide a two-fold acceleration in the cycloaddition process. It should be noted that the ability to scale this reaction required a more robust and safe route to MTAD. The previous route began with nitrosylation of dimethylurea, which thereafter was treated with an aqueous solution of ethyl carboxate at elevated temperature. Treatment with KOH to promote cyclization followed by acidification led to the corresponding urazole, which required recrystallization. This could then be oxidized in the presence of terbutyl hypochlorite, which after sublimation provided MTAD in pure form. This route suffered from toxic intermediates, multiple purifications, and required a final sublimation step, which was the true bottleneck for the synthesis. We thus reimagined synthesis to begin with ethyl carboxate and treatment with CDI followed by methylamine provided the cyclization precursor, which could be crystallized and produced on one mole scale. Thereafter, treatment with potassium carbonate and a solution of methanol reflux followed by acidification yielded a mixture of urazole and KCl salt after evaporation of solvent. The mixture was not crystallized but used directly in the following oxidation step, filtered and evaporated to provide MTAD, which showed virtually no difference in both yield and enantial selectivity when used in our arena file chemistry. With our general proof of concept achieved, we envisioned a paradigm shift in which while previous dearomative functionalizations required a fully functionalized arene, we now traced back our target molecule to a simple, unfunctionalized arene such as benzene. We selected aminoglycosides as a suitable target for several reasons, both structurally and with regard to biological activity. The 2-deoxystreptamine class remains to be one of the most abundant types of aminoglycosides. While the molecules seem large and daunting, the similar motifs can be realized, namely the 2-deoxystreptamine core highlighted in red. The main differences can be attributed to the locus of the sugar attachment, as well as the identity of the actual sugars attached. Furthermore, a 2-deoxyfortamine core exists as well, in which the amine and oxygen functionalities switch places with respect to the 2-deoxystreptamine core. From a therapeutic standpoint, these compounds are highly potent in broad-spectrum antibiotics, but typically only used as last resort due to their negative side effects, including hearing loss and kidney failure, as is the case for semi-synthetic analogs such as plasmacin. Additionally, as is the problem of many antibiotic therapies, such compounds are prone to antibiotic-resistant bacteria. Due to their highly promising therapeutic effects, yet inherent shortcomings, the derivatization and studies of aminoglycosides has been an ongoing effort in the past several decades. While acidic degradation of the readily available aminoglycoside can be achieved, it yields a fully unfunctionalized 2-deoxystreptamine core, which must undergo desymmetrization, functional group manipulation, and protection to arrive at either desired aminoglycosides or analogs. De novo synthetic strategies have also been successfully completed, starting from either chiral feedstocks or functionalized cyclohexanes, but suffer from similar challenges with regards to selectivity and functionalization. Looking at these scaffolds, we imagine that either the 2-deoxystreptamine or 2-deoxyfortamine aminoglycosides could be accessed in a programmable fashion from a key cyclohexadiene intermediate. This could in turn be traced back to benzene through a deamide of hydramination, which we imagine developing through arenophile chemistry. This would be advantageous as the prior art for hydramination provides a low yielding and inseparable mixture of compounds. The reaction manifold that we envision relied on well-studied copper hydride chemistry in which a copper hydride species could be generated in the presence of silane, a copper source, and an appropriate ligand. We thought the benzene MTAD cycloaddict was suited to either undergo lilic substitution or hydrocuperation based on our previous knowledge of the system. Both paths could then arrive at a cuprate diene intermediate that when treated with an additional equivalent of silane could turn over the copper catalyst and reveal the desired hydraminated product. Fortuitously, we found several ligand classes to be effective in the transformation, including NHC as well as Tanya Foss. 
We are able to see exclusive site and dye stereo selectivity when using deuterated benzene, which led us to further investigate the reaction mechanism. To gain a more in-depth understanding, collaborative efforts with the Peng Lu Group at the University of Pittsburgh provided a lowest energy pathway to favor the plausibility and likelihood of the hydrocuperation and beta elimination mechanism. We also found the hydrocuperation to be the enantioinducing step due to the irreversibility evidenced by the significant energy barrier. A modeling of the substrate occupancy in the most sterically accessible quadrant during this step also matched well with the observed enantioselectivity and isomer. With the armate of hydroamination developed and key intermediate in hand, we focused our attention on the synthesis of robustomycin as we found it a suitable target to showcase our new method. It should be mentioned that we were able to conduct the hydroamination step on a 100 millimole scale, which provided a reliable supply to decagram quantities of the key intermediate. Due to the sensitive nature of the cyclohexadiene, we were unable to purify it using column chromatography and instead opted for an acid-base extraction to afford analytically pure material. At this point, the product was directly subjected to a one-pot terbutyl carbonate protection and epoxidation sequence, which yielded allylic epoxide as a single constitutional and diastereoisomer. The block protection proved crucial for obtaining the desired anti-configuration between functionalities. Treatment under basic conditions allowed for a Bach D protection followed by a 5 exotet cyclization of the urazole moiety. Solvent exchange and exposure of the resulting secondary allylic alcohol to benzyl bromide and sodium hydride afforded the corresponding benzylic ether. A final olefin functionalization, this time an epoxidation proceeding through a bromohydrin followed by treatment with base, furnished bicyclic epoxide as a single diastereoisomer. This intermediate now was one step away, involving an epoxide opening with a suitable O nucleophile from a fully assembled 2-deoxystreptamine aminocyclotol core. Incorporation of the final oxygen atom to the core proved non-trivial because most oxygen nucleophiles were either unreactive or incompatible with the substrate under more forcing conditions. In many cases, the oxygen nucleophiles began to cleave the urazole. Gratifyingly, we found that the nucleophilic character of lithiated acetophenone ketoxime to be perfectly tempered, as evidenced by the exclusive formation of the corresponding secondary alcohol. Notably, the newly installed oxime ether served as a complementary protecting group to the benzyl ether. Importantly, the installation of the bridgehead urazole served as a strategic cornerstone on several levels. Firstly, it installed both nitrogen atoms in a required SYN-1-3 relationship. Secondly, it provided a unique and robust protecting group for the diamine throughout the synthesis. Finally, it served as an indisposable conformational directing group, guiding the selectivity of the oxime nucleophile, which can be seen in the first Plattner analysis. At this stage, we installed all five contiguous stereocenters and heteroatoms, which provided a differentially protected core primed for selective glycosylations. After an exhaustive screening campaign, a first glycosylation with benzylated ribose glycosyl donor and an in-situ generated activator from Lawson's reagent and silver perchlorate delivered the pseudodisaccharide with exclusive beta selectivity. Thereafter, reduction with zinc and acetic acid chemoselectively removed the oxime group and revealed the secondary alcohol. A second, this time alpha-selective glycosylation using thioglycoside donor in the presence of aniodosacinamide and triplic acid afforded fully decorated pseudotrisaccharide as a single diastereoisomer. To secure the natural product through global reduction, the urzol motif was first converted to the cyclic diazine through exposure with base followed by oxidation of the corresponding cyclic hydrazine with copper chloride. The final reduction resulting in the removal of six benzyl groups and conversion of two azides and the bridgehead diazine to the corresponding amines required Perlman's catalyst in a mixture of water, methanol, and ethyl acetate at 130 psi of hydrogen. This was followed by a solvent swap to aqueous acetic acid and the addition of the second portion of catalyst. Filtration of the reaction mixture and solvent removal provided robustomycin as a tetraacetate salt. Notably, this two-stage reductive protocol was essential in obtaining a pure product and obviated the use of size exclusion chromatography, 
or other methods which are commonly used for the purification for these highly polar classes of compounds. We now believe with the accomplishment of this synthesis, we can open the doors to enable the synthesis of other aminoglycosides and analogs using a bottom-up approach. I have to thank my previous colleagues and collaborators involved in this project, Matt again for the invitation for this episode, and the listeners for their attention. Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Chad for taking us through this very interesting synthetic approach. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.